What's good, MJ traders and investors? It's Rod with Pow Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth for an MJ Sector Review. Today's a review for Wednesday, June 23rd. And in today's video, we're going to go through it a little quicker today. Not a whole, whole lot to report, but the main topic of the day, we're going to focus on Sundial Growers Inc., ticker symbol SNDL on the NASDAQ. So up over 12% today and was the, was the clear lead bull in the MJ space, both in the US and Canada. So we'll spend a little bit more time analyzing and doing some technical analysis on the SNDL chart. But before we do, we'll run through some news and events like we normally do, and then we'll look at the SNDL chart in detail in the Canadian and the US MJ space, and I'll put some timestamps in the description below. So I hope you had an awesome day today. We'll run through the news and events. Rhode Island Senate approves MJ, so legalizing MJ, and that came from a 29 to 9 vote earlier in the week, and that came just soon after Connecticut legalized at the recreational level as well. Also, Canadian MJ sales increased 74% in April to 309.7 million, which is great to see. And with everything reopening into the summertime, we'll continue to see whether or not that trend remains the case, if it continues to see a trend up. Also, Michigan MJ sales dipped 3% in May, as prices plunge, so a bit of a mixed bag there at the state level. Missouri activists plan MJ legalization initiative for 2022. I could see 2022 being the year of MJ. Let me know in the comments below if you agree with me. Also, if you wanna to go to bodyandmind.com and click on investors and then news, you can click on this news release and you can get a replay of the conference call. It was this morning at 10.30 Eastern time, but they had a replay here. And uh, you can just go dial that one 888 until June 30th, 2021. And replay number is 306817 pound. Also, Canera Biotech Inc. completes acquisition of T-God state-of-the-art cultivation and manufacturing facility in Valley Field, Quebec. And Canopy Growth closes the acquisition of Supreme and they issued 9 million more shares to complete that acquisition. So a little bit of dilution there, but not a whole, whole lot. Also in other news, three former executives of CanTrust charged with fraud so this was a long time in the making, but finally taking the trial there and seeing those charges being laid after, you know, deceiving the, uh, you know, Health Canada and basically having grow rooms that weren't, weren't inspected and approved by Health Canada. That's a big no-no. And uh, my heartfelt uh, feelings go out to those that were impacted by that because that's just not what we ever want to see. And hopefully that's the last we hear of that. Also touch on this real quick. I've mentioned a few times now, the MJ Council of Canada, you can go check this out, but essentially it's a petition uh, to get rid of this, in, this insane regulation and limits around beverages. So you can only buy five currently, but you can buy a hundred bottles of oil spray. It makes absolutely no sense. If you don't agree with this and you want to see change, go here, scroll down to the bottom. There's a petition, but you can't edit the message. You just enter your name, email, and postal code. This is a template, so you can't enter, you can't change that. So just fill that out. So moving on to SNDL, SNDL, we had our ABC correction and now we're working on our second wave. So we had our first wave, our second wave being the first corrective wave. And we're looking to hold EMAs here on the weekly time frame as we attempt a weekly trend change. So if we do bounce on the weekly, if we break the high of 112, that's gonna be key resistance. Then we'll be looking up to 149 and 150 psychological. If we break 149, that's going to confirm a weekly uptrend and that is going to be crucial as that will mean that monthly higher lows are being set and we would have held the 10 month moving average. And then if we can close the month over EMA 12 at 109 with only six days left, that is going to be extremely important. And a lot of names on their monthly timeframes trying to get above monthly EMAs, which was going to be the first time since all time highs. So again, gonna be watching that, that weekly level here at 112. That's the most important level for me at the moment while we attempt this weekly trend change and attempt to set monthly higher lows. We also held the 10 week moving average here in this pullback at 90 cents. So a close above 90 cents would be bullish as well. We had a bull cross on the stochastic, MACD very close to a bull, uh, bull cross, but still some work to do. And we held the 50 weekly moving average on this pullback at 71 cents. So again, we hit a low of 65. So if you were looking for bullish entries, this is when, when I was starting to load up, right? When we lost a dollar, I, I sold on that run up about a dollar 40, I think it was, we hit a dollar 49. So I sold on that run up here and I sold into the into strength at around 130, 140. And now just looking to load, I, I anticipated that the short squeeze was likely over and that we weren't going to see a, a huge short squeeze like the one that we did see here back in the uh, beginning of the year in February, just because so many people were expecting it. And uh, I said in my video, it was short squeeze finished, you can check it out, but essentially I was targeting $1 for a re-entry and here we are dipping below it, got as low at 87 cents, but we did hold that 71 cents level 
Uh, so if you were looking for a longer term entry there uh, a few weeks ago, that would have been a great entry, which we mentioned as well in a previous video. And on the daily time frame, we held the 200 day moving average similar to Tilray. So I did a video on Tilray whenever we saw that, you know, 80 plus percent pullback from February and we got down as low as I think it was 13 or $14. And a lot of names were holding their 200 day moving average. So that was the sign. And then we bounced off of that and then we lost the 100. We held the 50 here on this recent weekly high or low as well. So that is sitting down at 89 cents. And then if we lose that, we have the 200 down at 76 cents, but everything's looking good. We close at a dollar and we'll be targeting. We also have the 100 day moving average at 113 and the weekly VWAP at 108. So a lot of resistance there around 112, 113, but the key resistance is gonna be 112. Get above that, weekly bounce is underway and then we have a lack of resistance up to 149 on the weekly and we'll attempt that weekly trend change. And again, monthly time frame closes in six days. Want to close above EMA 12 at 109 to end the month. And a lot of names trying to do the same. ACB, so Aurora, unable to get above EMA 12 since it lost all-time highs. So a close above EMA 12 would be notable in Aurora's case. On Canopy Growth, again, trying to get, we already got above it after that huge run. But now we're, we're struggling and just trying to close above it here. And Cron, another one of our names that got above it, Hexo. Still yet to close a candle above EMA 26. So if we can close a candle, the monthly candle here over 710 to end this month, that is going to be the first time since all time highs. And that's going to be extremely bullish in my opinion. Tilray got over it, but didn't close a candle over EMA 26. So what Tilray is going to try to do is close a candle over 2780 to end the month. And that's quite a ways away. So it's not looking like it may happen here in six days, but anything can happen. It's, uh, it's about 50% away. So we'd like to see a, a candle close over that level. And taking a look at SNDL, or OGI rather, already looked at SNDL, we could see a monthly EMA 12 and 26 bull cross and trying to hold EMA 12 here three months in a row that we closed above it. So going for the fourth month in a row and just wanna take a look at Hexo here as well. Had a pretty good day today holding that weekly equilibrium with the low, high, double top, higher, low, double top, looking for another higher, low. We did see a bear break, but not much follow through. So we still have a weekly inverse head and shoulders. As long as we hold 550, that weekly inverse head and shoulders remains. And if we break 755, weekly uptrend confirmed, and we're likely targeting a move up to around $10 with a lack of resistance until 1104. But moving on, so on the bull and bear list, we had Love, XT, RX, PWR, and on the bull list, we had SNDL, PCLO, and N. Moving on to the US space, so MSOS, we've been saying for a while now that we're gonna be expecting a bounce on MSOS. We had a lack of resistance up until 41.62, and we hit daily oversold. So as soon as we broke the low of yesterday, or sorry, the high of yesterday, rather, at $38, the daily bounce was underway. Even if you just entered on that, on that signal alone, you could have entered there and you would have made it yourself just under 3%. So on the weekly time frame, we did have the weekly equilibrium that broke bearish, but we didn't see much follow through on that loss of 37.56. And at this point, we're just looking for monthly higher lows and no major red flags at the moment. Daily bounces underway, daily oversold bounce. And we managed to close over EMA 12. And again, lack resistance up to 41.62. And EMA 12 or EMA 26 rather at 39.78, so 40 psychological could be a resistance zone to be watching. But congrats to the bulls on that front. In terms of the bull and bear list, we had TAUG, TAT, and MMEN, followed by CWEB on the bull list. We had BioHarvest, BAM, and TrueLeaf. And just taking a look at MSOS, so the bigger bounce that we, the big of a, if we get a big bounce, we want to see as big of a bounce as possible. Bulls are hoping for a big of a bounce as possible. And then when we do start to consolidate, form a higher low here compared to 37.34 and attempt a daily trend change. Still a ways away before we change the weekly trend. Haven't even started the weekly bounce yet. So if we break 40.50, that'll be the high of last week. Weekly bounce will be underway at that point. But again, we've been saying, even yesterday said that USMJ has been a lot weaker than the Canadian counterparts. And again, that was very evident today, SNDL up over 12% leading the market. So BAM started to move a little bit today and daily inside bar. So we'll be watching to see which way this breaks tomorrow. 
and we'll have support at 43 cents and resistance at 44 and a half cents after having a stellar, stellar quarter of earnings. And another name that extremely bullish on, don't go sleeping on, bam, either. All right, thanks again for joining us on the Pursuit of Wealth for an MJ Sector Review, and we'll see you tomorrow after market close. Make sure to smash the like, subscribe to the channel on your way out, tick the bell, and you'll be notified in any future videos. We'll see you tomorrow for an MJ Sector Review and a daily market recap. Take care, everybody.